I've got an idea. Come with me. Oh, I'm gonna make this dream come a reality. I, I think we can make wireless brakes. Can we make this stop this from rotating on the trail? Oh, I cannot wait. Wireless brakes. Right, let me explain my mad theory. So we have the disc. Then obviously on the disc, we have the caliper. Then we need something to actuate the caliper. So I've got a 150 kilo servo with a cable that is going to pull the caliper. From the servo, then you will need a power stabilizer. And then from that, we have the receiver, which receives a signal from the levers up on the bars. And don't forget, the battery to power everything. To make all this work, we need a lever. That is where I will use the controller and build a little housing to attach it to the bars. This needs its own battery supply as well. And this is my theory on how wireless brakes are going to become a thing. These right here are the TRP uh, hydraulic caliper, but they're cable actuated. And I saw these kicking around in the office and I was like, oh, that is perfect for the wireless brakes because the hydraulics is just going to make it a lot easier and a bit more power than just trying to pull a cable because some of them are quite hard to pull. This is totally different to normal Blake builds where I'm working with metal and wood and building a van. I am going to go so geeky on this because I really want it to work because I think a complete wireless bike would look insane. So let's get cracking and I'm going to start with the caliper. So it all depends on where I put this one. Number one is steering. Number two is the servo. If I get the trigger, it should go zh -zh -zh. Cool, now we know it works. I'm gonna run a cable to there and see if it actually pulls it in. So what I'm gonna do. Put the disc in there. Ah! <laughs> it works. I think with a bit of jiggery pokery with the trim and how it works, you don't actually have to pull it. So there's no feeling like a hydraulic brake. This one is, why well, it's literally not even fly by wire. It's, it's soulless. You just have to go with what your brain would think, what that would think. So you were like, oh, I was touching now, but you'll feel it with the, the loss of speed. Now the wireless system, is going to be going on to my hardtail, my scout. So I've got the bike up here, I've got the brake here, the caliper, and what I'm going to do is that is going to go in there like that, tighten that down so it'll be clamped by the caliper itself, like that, and then I'm going to bend that down like this, so you've got this nice little shape here, servo is going to go here, electronics are going to go here, and the battery is going to go underneath. So I'm just going to go and cut some of this, trace this out on some steel, cut it, bend it, and then, yeah, oh, I think we've just got a little base platform for it, and then work out how I'm gonna mount the servo. I've actually got a unique idea.
Okay, so I've made a cardboard uh, template. I've done it out of steel now. I've actually cut these bits through here, so that's gonna go underneath the caliper. This is where the servo is gonna be mounted. All the electronics are gonna be mounted along here. The battery's gonna be underneath. I'm gonna go and test fit this. I'm gonna give it a nice little clean up and then fit on all the bits I need to put on there and um, boom, we've got it. So my mum and dad have arrived. Dad's brought us tea and it's normally my wife that makes us cakes, but uh, it's my mum that makes me cakes now. And uh, she's made turbo buns! <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Oh, look. You want one, Luigi? Luigi, you've got to have Luigi. one of those. I want to make a little cradle for this beast. I'm going to put it there. And also, it's going to give it a little bit more rigidity as well to a whole thing, because if it's pulling on it, it could do this. And I don't want to do, to do that. It potentially will do it over here as well, but... I think just to stop it from doing this, I'm going to put a little piece in there and a piece here, and then I'll just bolt it down and then trim the excess. Definitely soulless, because there's no feeling. It's gonna work. It's flipping gonna work, but there is flex. Because it's put, it's 150 kilos, and look at it. That is so strong, dude. The rear is all complete. Now I've just got to copy and paste, make it a little bit bigger for the front. So, run time lapse. All right, I've done. I've completely built two brackets for the servos and all the gubbins for it to fit on the bosses for the brakes. There's the front one, totally different to the rear because I've got the fork to do. Uh, and then this is the rear one and it's totally different to the front. I actually learned that you can just make a box and bend loads of shapes and it actually looks better than these little bullet things, but it's prototyping. So, I have loads of these old gusset brakes that I've had for years from my dirt jumping days. Kept them, because one day they'll come in handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this lever and system right here. Take it all apart, because we, we're going, cab going cableless, we're going, we're going tubeless, we're going everythingless. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and cut this all out, take one of these apart, and stick it all in here and come up with this. So, so far, I've come up with this. Look at that. But, that's not it. I need to put the brains onto this thing. And the brains is this right here. I need to put this in there, which is making my mind fry. Because I don't want to look too ghetto, but I want it to work. Ghetto's fine, but not too ghetto. Right, this is where it should go beep. Not a great success. God, that thing was on fire. Oh, me. Don't put your... <laughs> That's hot. Why is that hot? Oh, my lips on fire. Oh, it's melting it. Why? It's because they're touching in there. It's because they're touching in there. Ow! <laughs> Burnt my lip. Right. It's not touching. Do you reckon I've killed that? Ah, oh. yes. Right, 
Right, so I finished the rear brake um, controller or the lever. Uh, moment of truth, I'm going to test it out. So here's the caliper or the caliper moverer. Uh, turn it on. Connected. And you can just modulate it, look. Anyway, on that, I think I need to make a front one. So copy and paste this. Oy, boom, done. Two levers. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> We've got it. Front one is done. It's way better than the first one because I learned from the first one and this one's a little bit more tidier. Still looks like I made it in my garage, but it works. Gosh. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Right, we're in the woods, it's fully complete. I actually had to stay up quite late last night to rejig around the rear caliper because I built it to my scout. Now I've got all my spectral. This is my Canyon Spectral, everyone. Look at it, it's fully on. Lights are on, let's go and ride it. Right, servos are working. First trail, launch boof, launch pass. It's a blue, so it's moderate, which is good, because I feel like I'm on a blue, because my lights are blue. Anyway, drop it in. Oh my flipping goodness. Look at that. <laughs> what happened was, right, these levers are like, like I said, they're super delicate to touch. But this one, if you push it down and then pull the lever, it locks on. <laughs> That's what it did. So I did a gap up there, which I'll do again, but I won't push down the lever. As soon as I took off here to press the brake, I pushed down on the brake for some reason and uh, I locked up there and skidded all the way down here. I thought it was a goner. That was my first big scare. First big scare. But I'll do it again, because there's a nice gap here. I'll do that again, and probably not that. Hopefully not that. Oh, oh. It's happened again. Oh. Ah. Oh, okay. 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 Oh. That was fun. Oh, it's chilly. Right, I reckon we're gonna write some tech. Cause uh, going fast is something else, trying to modulate them brakes. Let's go and ride something tacky where it is the speed and tech and braking at certain points. That is definitely gonna put these on another challenging level. Oh my gosh, I'm pushing. Oh. Right, pros and cons of the wireless system that I've made for the brakes. Well, let's start with the controls. The front one, all right. It actually starts to beep the both of them if they start to run out of battery, which I didn't know, which is actually quite handy. The rear one, it keeps popping out. When it pops out and you pull it, it actually stays locked in. And that's not nice because it's happened to me a few times on the trail. I don't like that. So I might have to address that in Mark II. Actually, let us know 
In the comments, should I do a Mark II? Because I think I could improve on it like dramatically and uh, R&D is well in need. Front caliper is actually working pretty good. Apart from all the cables, it's running perfectly well. The battery is well and truly staying there. Nothing to change there, it's really solid. On the rear, that's actually not that great. I, I had to redo this whole plate system because the one I made was for the hardtail and it actually dug straight into the frame because of the post mounts. On the, uh, the hardtail, it was like this. On here, it's like that, so it digs straight in. So it's a bit flexy when you pull the brake and uh, that's not nice. Uh, but the I said about modulation, there is modulation, but it's so acute. There's such a micro movements within the lever to modulate it. You can't just do this. I find myself jerking on the brake, especially when I'm going fast. I don't really like it. I have to work out a gearing system to like bring it up or bring it down to make it feel like an actual mountain bike lever. Anyway, there's the pros and cons. It's actually working all right, but it's scary to ride. Talk about riding this, carry on down this trail and finish it. Oh, this where it gets rough. Oh, oh, oh my goodness me. That was a wild ride. It's like a stallion. You're trying to keep it under control. It's really hard. Yeah, I survived. Oh my goodness me, man. What an absolute project and experience to build a completely wireless bike to ride on the trails. I'm literally riding a technical black trail. This is corkscrew. It is a black diamond trail here in the forest of Dean. It's technical, it's got roughness, it's got roots. You need to pick your place where you need to break. And I'm riding, I'm not riding it fast and I'm, I'm a bit jerky, but there's, it's incredible how I am actually riding a trail with no cables whatsoever on my bike. I have a wireless dropper. I have wireless gears. I have cableless brakes. There is no hydraulic lines. There's no cables, there's nothing. Well, there's actually down there, very small, but there's nothing from the bars or the cockpit. It's incredible how technology has moved on. Is this the future of mountain biking? I don't know, there's a lot of R&D I actually need to do. And there probably is manufacturers out there probably trying to develop a system like this. I don't know. Let us know in the comments down below if you've seen this before because I haven't. And I think it's a bold claim. I think this is a world's first cableless bike. I think it's a thing. Anyway on that absolute wireless, out of control bombshell. Thank you very much for watching. And I am gonna go and get a strong cup of tea because this fried my brains. Let me know if you wanna see more of it though.